There's something we've all been talking about over the weekend. It all started with a couple of videos, people asking some questions about exactly how secure this SIM registration exercise has been, uh, raising questions about the possibility of more than one SIM card being registered to a particular Ghana card without the holder of the card even knowing. So, of course, people started to ask questions and it became an issue that required clarification. So, we're helping out with that this morning. The, the questions raised by these videos uh, are quite alarming because if you think about it there are many people who did indeed have that experience while registering their sim cards they were told that it didn't work the first time and uh, so they had to come and do it again or they had to wait a little bit and then do it again they were told some of them were told that the system was down so the, they had to do their registration twice in some cases three times so the question being asked is, how do you know that one or more of these extra times that you registered were not actually uh, used to register other SIM cards to your Ghana card? SIM cards which can now be used for, you know, all manner of things. Especially at the time that was a massive rush. You remember when we had to go and queue. Then Kojo, if yours was not successful, they asked you to sit aside. Mm -hmm. They got to do it with somebody else's own. Mm. And, and of course, I had their experience. There were a couple of us in that building. So if it's not going through, they say, okay, let's move to the next person and see what happens. Then they come back to you. So have you tried it again? So can we proceed with your own? I Apart from the fears about this being some deliberate attempt to do that, the possibility that it was inadvertent and that we went through that process except it doesn't give anybody comfort mm. all of this they, see there are always very key policy reasons for doing things key reason here attach whatever is mamavi's own to mamavi mm. so that when we put out mamavi's number we can get every single information from mamavi on the ghana card and everything that's related to it so if there are other numbers Register to Mahavi, Mahavi has no idea. If they are used to commit crime and tomorrow the police pick up Mahavi, mm. they might have a legitimate reason to do so. But would it be right for them to do so? Would it be fair to Mahavi, who right from the beginning had no idea mm. that there is any other? See, I didn't take it that serious until I saw Dr. Poku say put up a post on Facebook that they are working on a system that will make it possible for Mahavi to check whether your card mm. is connected to more than one number more and the number. numbers that they are connected mm. to mm -hmm. that really made me feel okay well this could be true or there could be some iota of fact in what they are saying moving beyond that if we don't fix this you know what it means right that the entire exercise is not as foolproof as we thought mm -hmm. it should be mm -hmm. that there could be people who are still using my Ghana card for transactions unknown to me. No way. And mm. beyond that, because see, we seal the loopholes, right? Mm -hmm. The idea also, and I've heard even ECG says, okay, if we know your Ghana card details, if we also know your what they call it, your number, even if you have debt, we can actually let the debt follow you wherever you want mm -hmm. to go to. Mm -hmm. But if it is could you answer debt that's following me? Mm. My friend of the big man see could you like you answer lives in. Mm. And the possibility that he may incur massive debt in that area. You get my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it, it brings nobody comfort at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you believe yeah. that? And you'll be walking around thinking that oh, I'm clean on this level, and yet the kind of things being done in your name, mm. with your representation, and more importantly, we made it clear that Ghana Card is supreme when it comes to all identification cards in this country. Exactly. So if the most important card has other connections, then that's quite problematic. So maybe you find a middle line in fixing it. If this is the first step towards that, I'm fine with it. Or else we are going to throw the entire project away mm -hmm. and make it look like it was a useless project. You see, Absolutely. let's not forget, eh? It was because some people could not also register or could not be identified as being registered with only one ID. Mm. And the porosity of the previous registration exercise. That's why we began the same registration again. Actually you get the point. Re-registration. Yeah, re-registration. Mm -hmm. Because we've done it before. Yeah. It's because we realize that if we don't use a single ID, it might be problematic. The authorities may create problems along the line. Mm. And we may p have people who are registered and still cannot be connected to anything useful. So that is why we sought to fix the problem. But is this really fixing the problem? Mm -mm. I yeah, mean, maybe not. let's just presume. Let's just give the benefit of the doubt to the people involved in this practice and find out maybe this, this is a small loophole. They can fix it 
um, because the amount of money we spent, the number of people who are about to go and queue every day, if this is going to be a useless process, it, it will be very painful. But this is also the same card that uh, the argument has been made to use for election Mm -hmm. uh, the, the election exercise yes, exactly yes, yes. and mm -hmm. we haven't dealt with that completely yet mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> a lot is based on this and and i can't believe that and this is like the base documents we are saying that this is yeah. basically the only document that you would need to do many other things and if s my my documents can be used for someone else then that's a problem because this is my identity this mm -hmm. is to only identify me I mean, it's scary to hmm. think about it. Ah, but tomorrow they'll say that you have Momo debt. The institutions, the banks and the telcos, they have a great deal to lose uh, if this uh, matter is not resolved. We have um, uh, Dr. Ken Ashigui of uh, the Ghana Telecommunications Chamber, the chief executive officer there, uh, joining us on the phone now. Uh, Dr. Ashigui, good morning to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. So I suppose there must be some development in this uh, whole inquiry into um, whether or not it's possible for more than one SIM card to be registered to a Ghana card without the cardholder being aware. What's the latest? Okay, so uh, today there'll be uh, there's a technical meeting to discuss um, the short code that was spoken about. But you should know that the SIM registration is in two phases. So there is the the where you link your Ghana card to your phone number. Mm -hmm. And that one, you just dial a 404, and then you enter your Ghana card details. And then you have to go and do the biometric, where your bio uh, is captured, there's a, a likeliness test and a liveliness test done. Mm. Uh, to capture those details. So, um, at when the uh, when we are you're doing the first thing, I could I can take your card and then I can link it to any number. Mm. The challenge would happen when I have to then go and do the second thing. So it is on the back of that that you remember that uh, the NCA directed that. Those who have done uh, the first phase but have not done the second thing, which meant that they had a Ghana card and but they were refusing to do the second thing, mm. they should be barred. And so there was the barring done. As late as uh, 31st of March, then he had directed again that people who had uh, we're still outstanding, you know, after the first barring had been done, you know, mm. we're still outstanding and have not done the second phase, they should also be barred. And mm. basically it's because of all of these things where somebody could just, you know, you, you somebody get access to your Ghana card and then is able to use that. Mm. And though they've been barred, if somebody had done that, those numbers, was still the length your Ghana card. And the reason the NCA had asked that all of these numbers uh, should uh, be, be delinked mm. from uh, Ghana card so that if mm. anybody had to go to your Ghana card detail and abuse that. Um, a few people have made mention of the biometric. Uh, that is difficult to do because if it's a new card that you're going to, if somebody wants to register a new card, and has to go through the biometric. It means that you should be standing there, the person should go through all the processes mm -hmm. and all of that. that. That would really, really be difficult to do. But uh, I'm sure after today's uh, meeting, uh, there's a short code that is being done, mm. which uh, would enable you to be able to find out how many Ghana cards are registered to your number. And then if there if is more than you have, uh, I'm sure the processes will be laid out as well to then delink them. Mm. And so that, that basically is what is, uh, is happening. Right. So um, the, 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 the scenario that was presented uh, it, it was, was, was something like this. So, for example, I uh, 
decide to register my SIM card. I have only one phone number. So I go through the phase one, the first process. I enter all of my details and so forth. It gives me a code and everything. Now I have to go to my telco to do the second phase. Now I get to my telco. I go to the office or their shop or whatever. And some member of staff there who, you know, has nefarious plans lets me go through the process to register my number to my SIM, my, my, my Ghana card. But then this person also has maybe another SIM card that he wants to get registered, but wants to register it to my Ghana card. So he comes back and says, oh, there's a problem. Uh, we need to do this process again. Now he goes and does the step, the phase one, enters the details of this new SIM card. Then he lets me come and put in my biometric data again under the guise of having to go through the phase two again. And this time around, I have ended up registering this new SIM card to my Ghana card without my knowledge. Now this SIM card is registered and can be used for anything, but I am not aware of it. So you see, that's why I say that when you have to register a new SIM card altogether, it is not, uh, it is done on the app straight away. So it's not like the one where you do a phase one and you do a, you do the phase two. The phase one, phase two is put together as one step. And if somebody were to do that, and I'm, I'm not ruling out that possibility that somebody would be able to do something like that but the processes the way they are would be really really very difficult you know it will take you forever uh for you to uh you know to go through that process of starting all over again you know but it's, it's something that we are looking into because those scenarios have been brought to our attention mm. and it's something that we're looking into to see how that is really possible most of the challenges have been with where we do when we had uh, people with their Ghana cards and their same numbers, and they had to register, and they had to do, as you said yourself, uh, the first phase, and then either with their app or go and do the second phase. So that a lot of people then did a lot of the phase once the the first. Because the reason why seventy six people were were back on the thirty first of March, and you did not see anybody coming to complain because. I guess, you know, those were people who had used people Ghana cards to do the phase one, you know, but I had then could not be able to go and do the phase two. But as I said, uh, there's some, uh, some work going into that uh, to ensure that... Your call has been put on hold. Right, let's uh, reconnect with um, Dr. Ken Ashigbe so we can continue to hear the rest of that explanation. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so I suppose the headline here is that this is a matter that is being addressed. Right. So there are technical meetings going on to understand the scope of, uh, let's call it vulnerability, mm -hmm. uh, that might exist and see what the fix must be. Yeah. But for the users, for the customer, uh, there is still some amount of concern. It's important for us to know what would happen in the meantime. Mm. If suddenly somebody turns up at my door and says, uh, you're our number one suspect in some uh, you know, cyber crime or some fraud case because a SIM card registered to your Ghana card mm. has been traced as the you know, yeah. number used for the, for the crime. Uh, we have, we have um, Dr. Ashigbe back on the line now. Um, uh, thanks, thanks for your patience. I think we lost you there momentarily. Uh, if you, if you wanted to wrap up that point you were making, okay. So I'm not too sure when, where I lost you. You, the line went off. But I was just saying that. Uh, so, um, the scenario where somebody uh, uses your Ghana card to do a new registration, which it's almost the the first phase and the second phase put together, mm. really it, it, it would be difficult to do that. It's something we're going to look into. The challenges have been those who have used people Ghana card to do the phase one and uh, have not been able to do the phase two, so have been bad. And those numbers still being linked to your Ghana card. Mm. Uh, that delinking is going to be done. And mm. then also 
uh, a short code is going to be provided where you can find out how many numbers are linked uh, to your Ghana card. Mm. And then uh, you can then take steps to make sure that those numbers uh, that are not would be delinquent. Mm. What what happens in the meantime, though, while this work is going on? What happens in terms of the uh, law enforcement side of things? Uh, w w what do I do if somebody suddenly turns up at my door and says, uh, you're under arrest, your, a number connected to your Ghana card has been traced as having been used for, say, uh, you know, um, uh, mobile money fraud, for example. W what do I do in the meantime? And also, what do you do, the telcos? How do you ensure that, uh, you know, the data you are dealing with is, is credible? Well, the, the, the thing about it is that what you do as a customer, definitely uh, beyond just the number that has been linked to a Ghana card, uh, there are other data that can be used uh, to verify whether it's you and all of that. So th that detail would have to be done. It's something that we, we need to deal with uh, in the first place. But if that should arise, that be, uh, that those would have to be done. And for us as well, um, that's I say, working together with a regulator, uh, you know, processes are going ahead to find ways in which we can clean, uh, you know, the, the, the SIM registry so that if it says it's you, it is really you. And it's something that really uh, we need to ensure that it's complete, completely done. Mm. Um, what other ways can you verify these? Uh, you know, someone's identity in the interim. If if someone has registered a SIM card to my Ghana card, it's got my name, it's got everything, it's got my biometrics. How are you going to, you know, be able to tell that I'm not the one who committed the crime? So, so you see, you know that the call records, you know, that digital footprint, you know, that you leave every time that uh, you know you use your phone. And uh, you, you, there are various false sites that you may, you may think that would be able to tell your location and all of that. So there's a lot of data behind, uh, you know, the calls we do, what we do, the movements we do, whichever, whichever who we are calling, uh, whatever cell sites we are hitting, you know, even where we did the registration and all of that. So and, and, and a bit more uh, detailed research mm. and investigation into it would be able mm. to really nail down to... Uh, who uh, is involved in these transactions because the person mm. would have used it to do a lot of things. So mm. th there's a lot more that uh, the cyber security experts, the forensic experts would be able to do. But as I say, the simple thing we want to do is to ensure that, you know, when you say this, uh, this card belongs to this person, mm. actually belongs to that person. And so that, that cleanup would have to be done mm. and those fixes would have to be done. What about you, the telcos and the banks? If uh, some SIM card that has been, you know, fraudulently registered to a Ghana card is used as, you know, to, to create a bank account yes, or a, you know, mo mobile money uh, transactions or anything like that, how do telcos protect themselves from these things happening in the, in the interim? I think we lost him again. Oh, we did. Mm. Oh, dear. Okay, let's see if we can reconnect um, as quickly as possible, get an answer to that question. Uh, before we wrap things up. But um, again, uh, what we are learning is that this is a, a, an ex uh, this is a, a problem that is uh, getting attention, that uh, they are seeking to understand the size of it and how to fix it. Um, in the interim, perhaps there isn't as much um, concern in terms of how safe you are um, because there are other ways of checking your identity. Uh, Mr. Ashikbe, I think Dr. Ashikbe is back on the line. Um, I, 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 we lost you again, but uh, you were, you were ex I was asking how uh, telcos and banks and other institutions that use these phone numbers as data, how are you going to protect yourselves from, uh, you know, some f fraudulently registered phone number being used for, say, mobile money, uh, you know, uh, loans and overdrafts and so forth? Oh dear. Okay, I think uh, we have difficulty with that phone line. Um, okay. Here's my take out, though. Mm. You know, he talks about uh, a short code yes. that will come up yes. soon, so that we can all check mm. what other numbers are registered linked to our Ghana cards mm -hmm. apart okay. from what we have. I think that would really Very be good. Important. I'm looking forward to that. Very important. Uh, well, you know, except that I, I, I would have preferred the situation. 
that once we're also giving our short codes to check whether we're fully registered, we have been giving a short code right from the get-go to know mm. the numbers that are mm. I mean, linked to our Ghana card. Because yeah. today, I mean, people have been, people register, you know, they do businesses online. You send them money and you don't get the back to them again. Mm -hmm. If you are to chase mm -hmm. these persons, for instance, mm. who are you going to get to finally? Exactly. And so a lot of harm could be done around this time. And I find this whole thing about we're going to come up with a, you know, a, a short code very soon. I think it's worrying. Mm. This is something we should have anticipated yeah. right from the beginning when we're doing this. I that look, people could do this because this is an electronic system. Mm. Once you find out that two, three, four, five numbers are being linked to one, it should be of concern to you to find out what is happening. And immediately, you know, uh, roll out a short code to do this. But I'm also interested in knowing who has failed us. You know, at what points in the chain, mm. who is responsible? Mm. Uh, 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 Dr. Ashiwe, if you can hear us. Um, yes. That, yeah, that last question I was asking was about um, uh, the institutions. How do ah, you... Yes. Yeah, no, so, so uh, after, um, for the telco, um, it's something that we're constantly using various means to be able to verify who has what, you know, who has which particular number and how the cards Ah, and as I said, uh, one of the things that we'll be doing is uh, empowering customers to be able to tell how many numbers are registered to their service. Yeah. And so that after we've done all this cleanup that's being done, that the regulator has asked to be done and that the linking that has been done, mm. then you are able to ensure that your uh, database is clean. Right. So, uh, yes. so today, if somebody has registered another SIM to my Ghana card, and they decide to come for an, for like a you know one of these loans, MTN Quick Loan or Vodafone, whatever you know these overdraft uh, services that the telcos have, what is to stop them from acquiring such a facility in my so, name? Yes, so if therefore, bear in mind that if somebody used your number to do uh, the first phase uh, of the registration, and because it's not the person, the person could not go and do the biometric. Bear in mind that that number, the likelihood that it would have been bad. And once it is bad, the person does not have access uh, to all of those services again. If the, the complex one of somebody coming, you know, going and saying, uh, you know, uh, wait, the system is down and all of that, which, I, as I said, we are investigating to find how that is possible. Uh, for some particular services, uh, if, if it's a quick loan that is on the, uh, on, the, on the number as well, then that would be difficult to, uh, because... At the end of the day, the person is still using that card. Well, that leaves for, that leaves your customers vulnerable then, and uh, you know. So I'm I'm wondering, first of all, I mean, even going back to the big picture, uh, how did we miss such a potential loophole? Because no, so so you know, could you, I, the 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 thing that I'm saying that we need to look at the the situation where somebody is able to do a biometric capture of your. Of 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 uh, of your with your your Ghana card number. That's something that uh, on the face of the uh, the assertions that people have made, we are looking into because that's almost difficult to do. I will not say unlikely, but very difficult to do. The easiest one that people had done and people were doing was to use your um, your Ghana card because they have the access to that information. To do the first thing, to do the, right. the when the, the, it was broken and you do the all for to be able to do that. Mm. So that's I'm saying that the cure for that in the past was to bar all those who have done the first phase and have not gone ahead to do uh, the second thing. Yeah. But for the situations where the person would be able to do your biometric as well, uh, we're really looking into that. And I say it, 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 it's very very difficult 
for that to be done. And so those numbers uh, would be very minimal. And the things about all of these things also as well is that in some of these situations, there are some security questions that are asked beyond just your, uh, you know, the, the, the Ghana card details and all of that that you give for some of the services that have to be rendered. You know, and so those are some of the ways in which, uh, you know, you block uh, access to the first step, uh, being, able to, uh, being able to do this. But, you know, in, in all of these things, I you know what you would say, when the hunter learns to shoot without missing, the bird learns to fly without patching. So on the constant basis, you have your ethical hackers also looking into ways in which these uh, first steps are active. And then you are blocking all of those loopholes. And it's something that will constantly be with us and be need to be dealing with we need to be able to cure mm. you know so that's definitely something that we need to work with <laughs> and then we need to get to a point where maybe the uh, you know the sim registration uh you know it's a it's, it's a one process and it's a bit tighter so i'm sure with all of these things that are coming and with the technical committees that are meeting we'll find ways in which we'll constantly find ways of improving and making sure that the process is tight. There are some who say that this is one that should have been obvious to your ethical hackers, if you will. It should have been a loophole that was spotted from the very beginning. But that's, that's, why, that's why I said to you that from the very beginning, from, from last year, for example, about you know, a large number of people were, were, you know, were, were bad because of the fact that people had gone ahead and done the stage one and then you the question you ask yourself is if the person has a Ghana card why is it that the person would not go ahead and finish it then some of the arguments that were made where people you know had misplaced their Ghana card so they could not physically take their Ghana card uh, to get it done you know so then the regulator then said bah but then if people come and they reported it you know, then you were able to deal with those who had fallen into those cracks and all of that. But the majority of the people who were bad, you know, in the first one, and then the 76 uh, odd ones, again, that was done on the 31st. Very few of them, you know, came back to say, you know, so those numbers were taken out of it. The only challenge is that now you have people going to, uh, you know, going wanting to add numbers to their Ghana cast, and they are finding out that, you know, other numbers have been uh, registered to them, and most likely, a lot of these numbers are those who have been who have been bad. So they are not, um, numbers that are not active. So once you take that off, then you'll be able to see uh, if there are others as well. Then you will deal with that, and that's what I'm saying that uh, today that when that we're trying to finish the process of getting a short code, where um, subscribers would then be able to tell. Uh, you know, how many numbers are still linked up to their page. How soon can and we then, get the short code? Pardon? How soon will we get the short code? I'm pretty sure by the end of this month. Uh, that's the timeline that we're working toward. Uh, you know, but you know with all of these engineering things you have to do, you have to test. But there's a lot of focus and a lot of attention uh, that, that, that is being put to that. Right. I want to say a big thank you to you, uh, Dr. Ken Ashigwe, uh, CEO of the Ghana Telecommunications Chamber. Uh, thanks a lot for your time this morning.